If you have a two-handle delta faucet that is dripping like this, or if it is leaking right there under the handle, I want to show you how to make those repairs. It is very easy. If it's dripping like this, that is normally the wear on the seats and springs. Occasionally, a little tiny piece of debris will get in the port where the seat and spring sits, and that will definitely cause it to leak. And if it is leaking from under the handle, that will be the cartridge. You can call Delta before you get this little project started and they will send you the cartridges or the seats and springs at no charge. So obviously the first thing we're going to do to start this is turn the water off. Um, we've all heard it a thousand times, righty tidy, lefty loosey. These are quarter turn stops, so you only have to turn that handle 90 degrees. So if you go to turn your water off on your cabinet and you have a stop under there, a little valve, with that type of a handle and it is a multi-turn valve and you have to turn it you know a revolution or a revolution and a half to get it to stop and turn off and that valve is actually in this condition a lot of corrosion around a packing nut you know the valve's been in your home 20 or 30 years and you haven't operated it i would definitely not turn that stop i would go to the meter and turn your water off at your meter um, these little stops cause lots of problems, which we have a video on that. And we also have a video on how to turn your water off at the meter. So just make sure that you have that water turned off. So now we're going to make sure that our stops under the cabinet are actually functioning properly and that the water is off. We're going to go ahead and try to open the faucet up. No water. So we know that the stops did their job. Uh, we probably get the phone call maybe once or twice a year that a person uh, tried to operate those stops under there and was not aware of the fact that they failed. The water was still live. They took the handle off the faucet, then they removed the retaining ring off the faucet, and you know the cartridge blows straight out of it, and it creates a little flood super quick. I always like to set a towel down behind my faucet. So when you disassemble it and water starts to come out of the valve body, um, it won't seep down under the cabinet base. And you can also use that towel to dry up the water in the valve body. When you go to set the seat and spring in there, the seat actually floats. It can be a little bit aggravating trying to get it down the port. And the next thing you wanna do is pull up your pop-up lever, shut the drain so if you do happen to drop something uh, it's not going to go down the drain and i also like to put a washcloth down over the pop-up assembly the plunger um, and so if you're working with a oil rub bronze finish and you happen to drop your channel locks or crescent wrench um, you're not going to scar that finish so next you're going to find the hole in the handle and inside that hole in the handle, there's a 5 64th Allen screw. So you'll just take your wrench and loosen that screw up. And you want to be very careful not to strip that screw. If you strip that screw, um, you're not even gonna have a starting point. And what will have to happen is you would take a drill and drill that screw out. It's gonna ruin the handle and it leads into all kind of complications. So just, just be careful not to strip that screw. Anyways, when you get the screw loose, the handle will just pop right up. It just comes right up. And I always like to set my uh, pieces relative to the position that I took them off in. And you'll notice that's going to be a common little thing throughout this project. Okay, so we are ready to go ahead and take the retaining nut away from the cartridge. And then we're going to pull that cartridge out. Oh, there's a little bit of the water that we talked about that would be in there. Um, if that was a lot of water, it would try to get up under the little uh, discussion right here and go into the cabinet. So we can just keep that towel back there and keep everything dry. And I don't know if you can see, but I tried to pull that cartridge out and set it exactly the way that it was when it came out of the valve body. So the next thing we're going to do is reach down in here with our little dental pick and just take the seat and the spring out. It just comes out. It's just that easy. It comes right out.
and I always take those immediately and throw them in the trash so you don't get confused with that one and your new one. No, I said that I like to take these seats and springs out and throw the old ones away immediately. Um, I just wanted you to see this old seat that I took out. I don't think there's going to be any way to get those two mixed up. That thing is uh, really distorted looking. I just want to show you guys the spring and the seat real quick. If you'll notice, the spring is a little smaller on the top, so the seat can go on the spring like that, and it has to sit down in the little hole or the port of the valve body exactly like this, with the spring on the bottom and the seat facing that direction. So normally we use this little seat and spring tool. Of course we do this, you know, probably every, every other day, literally. Um, and you can just slide the seat on there like that. Slide the spring on and just, you know, stick it down in there, pull this back and it seats it. I know most of you are not gonna have that so, you, you know, you can take an Allen wrench or anything straight and just slide this and then tip it into the hole and just stick it down into the hole. So next, we're going to go ahead and get all that water out of the valve body because, like I said, that will make the seat float up off of the spring and there's no tolerance to get that stuff back down to the hole. So... You want to get all that water dried up out of there. Like that. So we're going to try to get a picture of me trying to get this seat and spring down in the hole. I'm, it's not going to be much room to work with, but you just drop that down in there and kind of press that down with your finger. And then when it's actually in there, you can actually push up and down on the spring and feel, you know, a little resistance in there. It should be straight up and down, and then you'll know that it's seated right. So here's our new cartridge. Um, I like to use Delta Factory products, if at all possible. Uh, as you see on the cart, this is a RP25513. Um, these cartridges are for quarter-turn faucets. I'm sure you noticed that there are a couple of tabs on the cartridge right there and they sit in the notches in the valve body just press that cartridge down in there and kind of put a little pressure on it start your retaining nut on there you do not have to get this nut really really tight it needs to be between snug and tight, but you definitely do not want to over tighten it. So just tighten that down. Uh, you actually can put those cartridges in 180 degrees um, opposite of what they're supposed to be. And if you do that, the, you know, the valve will open and close um, backwards. Okay, so now that everything's back together, I'm going to reach under the cabinet and turn the water back on. And I like to leave those um, Allen screws loose until I've tested the water off and on a couple times and pull the handle back off and make sure down in here and all around in here, there is no water leaking. So next we're gonna to check to make sure that we have ours in the correct position and so that will be closed and open, so everything is the way it's supposed to be, and that's pretty much all there is to it. If you like this video or found it helpful, uh, please hit the like button or share it with a friend, and please subscribe. And don't forget to retighten your Allen screw back onto the cartridge, and that, that's all there is.